everyone. This one's really fun. This is um, one of those little mindset hacks that um, I've wanted to share with you this week because A, it's got a super catchy title, so hopefully a lot of you will see this video, um, but equally because I think it gets to the importance of, or it gets, it gets to the understanding of the changes that we're trying to make on a deeper level. So I called this one How to Cheat Time, and what I wanted to share with you today is that sense of as we are starting to shift our ways of working, um, you know, we've, we've got a traditional project management approach that talks about time, cost, quality, the iron triangle, um, and, and, you know, how are we managing against each of these three aspects? And so a lot of the systems that we have in our organizations today are built around this obsession of uh, cost, understanding cost, um, usually to the detriment of tracking benefit. Um, quality, usually to the detriment of understanding what's important and what matters to customers. Um, yeah, I'm being controversial today. And time, this obsession around time. When is it going to be delivered? Are we going to be delivered on time? What I wanted to share with you today is that as you start to get into um, ways of working that value responsiveness and the ability to adapt as you go through your work, what you find is that you're able to cheat time. So I think I've, all, I've talked to everybody about the ski jump. I think there was a, um, a video that I did around curves a while back now, but in a traditional kind of project approach, often what we find is that we go through a long period of time where we don't deliver a whole heap of value, and then the value comes all at the end. Um, and so, you know, as we're going through that requirements gathering process and we go through raising a business case, we build a design, we, we actually build the software. Whilst we're going through all of those kind of traditional project phases, there's zero value being delivered to customers, right? So if we were to look at a graph of cumulative value delivered over time, we're getting a whole lot of nothing for a long period of time. And then at some point, <clears throat> we put a piece of software or, or whatever it is into, into test and maybe we've got some risk reduction um, understanding there, maybe we're testing with a few customers, maybe there's a pilot group, um, but really the value doesn't come to right at the end till we've actually delivered the project. Construction projects are classic for this as well, right? Like you can't kind of use the building before the building's built. So the, the graph of cumulative value over time looks like the ski jump. You know, a whole lot of nothing and then all of a sudden it spikes up at the end. And so understandably, we want to make sure that we're tracking cost and time because we are waiting for that thing to get done so that we can get some value because we've spent all of this money and we really, 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 really want to make sure that we get the value at the other end. So it's totally understandable that we have this obsession with cost and time, right? When we start to look at, <clears throat> excuse me, breaking work down into small chunks, when we start to look at agile ways of working, uh, we get into iterating our way, learning our way towards that beacon on the hill, learning our way towards customer value. And um, <clears throat> instead of the ski jump, instead of that curve, what you've got is a number of, let's say, we've broken the work down into five or six discrete outcomes. We've delivered those incrementally. What you end up with is that each time you deliver a piece of value, it's going all the way to production, it's going all the way to a customer, and you get some feedback on that. And then you come back and you reassess and you deliver the next one. And so we build this sense of momentum and delivery <clears throat> because we're delivering one increment and then a second and then a third. And so the cumulative value delivery over time looks less like a ski jump and more like an S-curve because, yeah, we might have some, some ramp up where we don't deliver a lot for the first little chunk, but very quickly we get something in out to market and we're learning from that and then we do the next one. And so our value delivery curve escalates much more quickly. And then equally over time, we will have delivered a large chunk of what's needed we might find that our ability to diminish value, really, that, that also starts to sort of taper off and that, that curve flattens out. So we get this S curve. 
the reason this is so important is because this is where all of that stuff around agile is about faster comes from. Agile's not faster. If we looked at the same project built two different ways, if we did all of the same work <clears throat> in a traditional versus an agile project, it's going to take us this, almost certainly the same amount of time to get to the totality of that outcome using an agile method as it would using a traditional project management approach. However, the benefit of breaking work down into small chunks is that we get those feedback loops. So we are getting something into market earlier. Might not be the totality of it, but we're getting something into market earlier. So there's a huge amount of benefit in that in terms of creating momentum, in terms of risk reduction, because we've gone all the way through end to end, and of building that sense of progress. So it's going to feel faster. And because we're getting feedback, we then have the opportunity to make a decision. Do we keep going with what we're doing? Do we stop what we're doing? Or do we pivot? Do we, do we change something? And that ability to ask those three questions every time gives us that responsiveness, which again makes it feel like we're going faster because we're able to recalibrate onto what's really important for customers. And that might be something that we didn't know when we started the project. So this whole idea of breaking work down into small chunks and delivering incrementally all of a sudden, as we start to go through this process, we're building momentum, we're getting feedback on what's important, we're pivoting to what's really going to have an impact. What happens is that because we've got that momentum, because we've got stuff going into market, because we've got feedback coming in, because we're honing onto what is truly important rather than what we thought was important at the start of the project, then this whole thing of on-time delivery becomes way less relevant. Because we've got stuff happening all the time. We've got stuff going all the way through to market. We've got constant feedback from our customers about what's important. And if something massive changes in the middle of it, we can just stop what we're doing. There's no sunk cost fallacy that we need to finish that thing off to get any value from it. And we can simply step away and move on to the next thing. So that's how you cheat time in project management. <laughs> Um, I hope you enjoyed that little insight today. Uh, it's it's one of those mind hacks that I use to kind of keep myself on track when I'm, I'm trying to think about restructuring portfolios and restructuring projects. Uh, but yeah, you can cheat time with Agile. Rock and roll. So drop me a comment, hit me up, drop me an email, drop me a comment below. I would love to hear from you. And I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having an awesome, awesome day. I will see you again next week. <laughs>